Intuit has done us a disservice. At the same time, they've made a great product that makes it really easy to use for managing the accounting for your real estate brokerage. And I just made myself guilty of the very thing I'm going to accuse Intuit of doing. The reason I say it's, they've done us a disservice is they've done a great job of marketing. And in that marketing effort, they've convinced a lot of us that using QuickBooks Online to do your bookkeeping is so easy that even somebody with zero experience can figure it out. In other words, you don't need an accountant. This actually upsets a lot of accountants, by the way. But more importantly, for your purposes, what I want you to understand is that to some extent it's true. QuickBooks Online does make it very easy to do the bookkeeping for a business where the accounting sort of side of the business, the model, is not complicated. For better or worse, with real estate brokerage, it's complicated, right? Not ridiculously complicated, but complicated enough that you're not going to be able to figure out how to do it on your own unless you have the right experience in the accounting profession. Now, if you're watching this video, there's a good chance that you, you've even been through two or three bookkeepers by now who didn't get it. There are specific nuances that come up in real estate accounting for a brokerage or an agent where if you don't have that specific experience, if nobody's shown you, you're not going to know how to handle it. And that's why it's possible that you've hired a bookkeeper or two. And when you said to them, hey, this agent was paid at the table on this listing, you get that deer in the headlights look. They have no idea what you're talking about because they don't have the experience. They don't even know what that means, right? Now, of course, somebody somewhere along the way should teach them. And you actually watching this may even be one of those bookkeepers who's looking to get that experience so that you won't have that deer in the headlights look. I've learned that when I do these courses, when I do these videos, um, that I have to be prepared to address both audiences. I have the real estate brokers who want to learn how to do this right or learn for that matter so that they know that the bookkeeper that they hire is doing it right. And of course, I have the bookkeepers and other accounting professionals who just want to learn how to do it so they can serve clients. So with that all said and in mind, the good news is it's actually not all that complicated once somebody shows you how to do it. And that's exactly what I intend to do. But before we go there, before I show you how to book a commission and all the expenses related to a listing, I want to show you the first step of getting bulletproof books. And to do that, let's take a look at my screen and I'll show you exactly what I'm talking about. Now in QuickBooks Online, the first step, the first thing I want you to do is go into this banking area and you're going to link up your bank feeds. Now, as you can see, I've got a sample here, Wells Fargo, one, two, three, four. Any major bank is going to be easy to find. And most non-major banks are also easy to find in here. When you go to connect a bank account, you're going to be prompted to, once you select your bank, you're going to be prompted to enter your logins. And pretty much from there, it's going to sync up and it's going to start downloading your transactions. And when it does that, it's going to look something like this, right? Now I took actually a real bank statement from a couple of years back and dummied up some of the information just so I can give you some examples of where I'd want you to start. So let's assume that you have a brand new real estate brokerage or you have a real estate brokerage that's brand new to QuickBooks Online. Either way, we're getting things set up for the first time. We link up our bank account and we see something like this, right? And the first transaction here, now these transactions are not in the books yet. This is QuickBooks is basically saying to us, hey, I've just downloaded all this stuff from your bank, but I need you to tell me where to put it in the bookkeeping system, right? That's what bank feeds mean. So when I look at this, I see I have an escrow deposit for $3,000. Now, as I said, I'm not going to teach you the whole process right now of recording the commissions and frankly, getting everything that happens between the gross commission you receive and this $3,000 that came into the bank here. And this may be the whole of it, right? It may be that you got the full amount of your commission from the title company, and then you're going to pay all the expenses out. Fine, easy to deal with. But for now, what I want you to understand before you understand how to record all of that um, is I want you to just park this in an account, okay? And so let's just call this commission clearing, okay? In the course, as we dive into the course later, I'm hoping you'll sign up, of course, um, I'm going to teach you all about this and how this works. But for now, just park it in an account like this. How is this set up? It's actually set up as a bank account. It's a fictitious bank account. It's a place to park the activity that goes in and out of your real bank account um, around a listing and the, the commissions you received and all the expenses. So what I've done here is I've created a category in the form of a bank account. So it's basically money that got deposited into Wells Fargo. And the other side of that is that I'm parking it here in the commission clearing account because then we can deal with all the details later on and separately. But for now, my goal is to help you reduce some stress 
by showing you how to keep this queue cleared out and keep it up to date. Because this is honestly 85 to 90 percent of the battle because almost all of your transactions are going to run through your bank account at some point in some way, shape, or form, right? Because you're going to do this for every bank account and you're also going to link up any credit card accounts that you use. And eventually you're going to make a payment from this bank account to that credit card account, right? So. So this is the first step in getting bulletproof books is establishing where things go, keeping this queue cleared so everything's nice and up to date. And then we can go back into the books later on where we need to for something like this and clean it up a little further, add in whatever details we need to add in and deal with it accordingly. So that's how you can quickly clear out this queue and keep things very much up to date, right? So I'll add this transaction into commission clearing. It's asking me to confirm because I didn't choose a class. That's fine. I'll just say add. I don't need to assign a class just yet. That's something we can talk about later. Here we have some transactions from Uber, right? So if I went traveling, I used an Uber for whatever reason, I didn't use my own car. Um, this is going to go to a travel expense account, right? Because that's what it's for. And we can create a rule for this, right? And so I can say, here's the key is that it was Uber. And by the way, every payment that you make, anytime money leaves your bank account, there has to be a vendor associated with it. We have to know who we paid. This is going to be very important for certain reports that we want to run later on. And also just when we're searching for transactions, right? So we definitely want to put the vendor in there and we can create a rule here. This is going to save you a lot of time. If you take the time up front to do this, it will save you a lot of time going forward. And believe it or not, this is one of the keys to getting bulletproof books is to not just automate and streamline the process of managing the bank feeds, which like I said, is about 85 to 90% of the whole process for your bookkeeping, um, but do it in a way that's going to ensure accuracy, right? We wanna make sure everything is accurate, meaning it got recorded to the right place, went to the right account, in the right amount, and so on and so forth. So we're going to, you know, we're going to call this rule Uber because it's how we want QuickBooks Online to handle any payments to Uber from now on. Okay. We're going to do it. It's for money out, not money in. And we're going to do it no matter what bank account it came out of. So we're going to choose all bank accounts. The one key here that you'll want to know is change the description here to bank text. I can't tell you why, but I can just tell you that in my experience, bank text works all the time and the description often does not work. So we're looking for transactions where the bank text contains and I just want Uber because there might be one transaction where it doesn't have uber.com and it just says Uber. So we just want to look for Uber and, and that underscores a very important point about this. How you want to think about how you're setting up these rules. You want to make sure you're going to catch as many instances as possible. There might still be exceptions, but this should be pretty good at catching most, if not all of them, right? The type is going to be an expense. The category we already had is travel. The pay is Uber. And for now, we're going to leave all the rest of this blank and we're not going to worry about it. But when I click save, you're going to see what's going to happen. So as soon as I created that rule, those transactions all disappeared. Notice there's no more Uber here. Why? Because I passed over something very important. I did it very quickly. But I'm leaving this in the video because I want to show you how to how to catch and correct something like this. So what happened is they got categorized. They already got added in to QuickBooks Online as soon as I set up that rule, which by the way tells you the rule worked, but it, it went so quickly that you wouldn't have seen it. So if I go here to categorize, here are my three Uber transactions and they all got auto added, right? Normally I don't like to do that because I always want to at least review things and make sure that the rule didn't pick up something it shouldn't have, right? Or vice versa, that it didn't miss something it should have. Although that, in that case, I'm going to see it there if it didn't work. I want to make sure it's not working on things it shouldn't be working on. So we go back up here to rules. And here's my one rule so far, because this is all brand new. I'm going to edit the rule. And way down at the bottom here, this is the default. I'm going to turn that off. I don't want to auto add those transactions. And I'll save it. So the next time it sees Uber, if I go back to banking, it will show it here. It will show a little green tag that indicates that the rule has been applied, that it's going to get booked to travel, but it's going to give me the chance to review it and confirm that it's right before it just adds it in to the register, right? And so you're going to want to go through your bank feed and do this for everything else that's in here. And as you can probably figure out by now, the more you do this, the faster it gets. There's It scales, right? Because now I'll never have to do it for Uber ever again. And so here is transactions for Google Apps, right? Because I use what's now called Google Workspace. So again, I'll just walk through this one more time to show you, and then I think you'll get the idea. 
Um, and the bottom line is you want to just code everything that comes in from the bank so that it's in your bookkeeping system. And then as we go on, and of course in the course, I'm going to walk you through, especially on those commissions that you might have received from title company, from escrow, um, you know, how to then go back and fill in all the details for those. But at least I've shown you how to park that stuff so you can get it out of the way here. And it's in the books, which means your bank account balance is now accurate because you've accounted for the $3,000 that you've received that you just haven't accounted for potentially for all the other details on the other side of that. Okay, so this is going to go to Google as the vendor. And you might want to distinguish a vendor for Google for something like Workspace versus Google Advertising, right? So I might want to do that in the vendor name just so it's clear because I pay Google for two really different things. Okay, we'll leave this as... Um, Usually I like to create an account called Internet Applications because that's what I consider that to be. So we'll add this in again as an expense. All right, we'll call this Office General Administrative and save and close. Google Ads, of course, would be advertising, right? So that would be a different kind of account. Um, and let's go create the rule. So I always do this first. I always lay it out before creating the rule because you wouldn't have necessarily known this, but then it, it helps uh, QuickBooks Online in filling in some of the blanks in terms of when you go to create the rule now. So again, we're going to change description to bank text, right? Money out, all bank accounts. That's perfect. Um, we This we need to take a closer look at in terms of what the text was, right? So here it puts in the memo what all the text was. So we really probably want this piece of it, you know, the Google Star Service apps. That's what I believe comes in to every single one of these transactions. So, because we definitely want the word Google in there, but we also want this distinguished from Google Ads, right? Which is going to have ads in there. So that's how we distinguish this from the other so that the rules don't sort of conflict with one another, okay? Transaction type is again going to be an expense. The category is internet applications. The payee is Google Workspace. And way down here, now it kind of remembered that, okay, we didn't auto add it. Or now, I, now that I had turned it off, the default is no longer that it's on, right? And so I'll click save. And now you can see what I wanted you to see the first time around, what it actually does when you don't auto add it. It just shows you right here, okay, I've got a rule applied and this is how I'm going to handle it. And so now you can just, you can actually now batch them and say, give me both of these and accept them right in. Again, it's confirming about the classes. I'm going to probably turn that feature off because it's annoying. Um, but you can just confirm and add them in for sure at that point. So that's your homework assignment. Go link up your bank account if you haven't done so already and start making some rules and get through at least a month's worth of data because once we have a month's worth of data done in the bank feeds, we can actually reconcile the bank account and that kind of seals the deal on a big part of the process for getting bulletproof books because when we reconcile that bank account, what that actually is doing, of course, is verifying that everything that went through the bank account is accounted for in the books. And what you'll also see, and it happens, is if there might be something that was recorded in the books that never actually cleared the bank. And then you can find out, in some cases, it's because it's a duplication of something. In other cases, somebody flat out made a mistake. I've done this where I recorded something quickly and made a mistake in the amount. Then it comes in in the bank feeds at the right amount. I add it in, and now I've effectively duplicated it, one in the right amount that'll match the bank feeds, and another one in the wrong amount. Of course, when I catch that, I just remove it. I delete it, right? So the reconciliation process is a way of verifying. It's a way of checking to make sure that we've got everything we should, and it also has a way of flushing out anything that might be in there that shouldn't be. And that's a big part of the first step for how to get bulletproof books. So I hope you enjoyed this video. And in the next video, I'm going to show you, we're going to get into a little part of the process of recording your listing income and expenses. And I'm going to show you my secret weapon for how I get this done and how I make it really easy, no matter how complicated your situation might be. So don't forget to uh, sign up to be on the Early Bird waitlist for the course. Just look uh, below this video where you're watching it for a little button that you can click that will take you to where you can subscribe to get on the Early Bird waitlist because I'm going to launch this course and I'm going to offer you a whole bunch of deals and I want to make sure you get an opportunity to take part in that because it's going to be a one-time offer and that's it. Then it's gone. So click that button, opt in, and look for another email with another video on my big secret for how to get Bulletproof books uh, specifically how to record the deals for a brokerage firm.